Well, as you both heard, today is the Feast of St. Cecilia. And at least this time, the lives of saints decides to be honest. And the first line for her entry is, we know nothing about this person. Apparently, she lived in Rome. Apparently, she was martyred. And that's about it. Uh, it's only in the Renaissance that she becomes the patron saint of musicians and then only because of one line in one poem that was written about her life. We have no idea if she sang. We have no idea she could carry a tune. She may have had nothing whatever to do with music in her own life, and yet she has come to have this association which has come right down to us in the form of music written for this day and concerts given on this day and all sorts of things around church music and church musicians for whom we do indeed give thanks. But I think it's important that poor St. Cecilia is, is only very tangentially related to that in any way that we can think of. Normally, that would be the beginning of the rant that apparently I've already actually begun about the way that the, 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 the roots of our faith are often pretty shallow in the way that we come to connect them with things in the history of the church. But today, I think it actually works to our advantage. I want to try to convince you of that. But to get there, I need to tell you that it's common, it isn't all the case every week, but it's common that in the week after I preach on Sunday, I will receive messages from people about the sermon, whether it's email or text messages or a brick through the living room window, whatever it's going to be, people will tell me what it is that they heard, what it is they remembered. And commonly, not always, but very commonly, what they are pointing out that they noticed was in no way related to what I was actually trying to say. This past week, I talked a little about running and someone in the congregation who is a, a well-known and, and, and avid runner wrote to me with a line that was actually a pretty good one-liner from the sermon, I must admit. I said, you can't run away from your own sweat, and he quoted that back to me. Uh, that really wasn't what I was talking about on Sunday, but it, it, it was something that, that stuck with that person. And it, I should, before I get too deeply into this rant, say that, in fact, it is often something sp of spiritual value that they've pulled out of it, even if it wasn't necessarily what my main point was going to be. And so I am constrained again and again to recognize that when I get up and do this, the Holy Spirit is the one who's really speaking, and that in some way, blessings are being distributed into the world, even through my ham-fisted talking up here in front of the room, time and time and time and time again. And that, I think, brings me to the other elephant in the room of this week, which, of course, is Thanksgiving. I commonly begin my prayers, whenever I'm doing pray, praying extemporaneously with people when I take them communion or for any other reason, by offering thanks to God for everything. And I'm very careful every time, or as many times as I can remember, to include in that the blessings that we receive that we don't really notice, that we forget, that we take for granted, that we place too little value on. I think in this week of Thanksgiving, perhaps what poor St. Cecilia and her slightly askew reputation are telling us is that this is the time when perhaps we should also be giving thanks for the blessings that have been distributed through us. It's pretty common, most families do it more or less awkwardly on Thanksgiving to sit down, have everybody go around the table and say what they're thankful for, what their blessing this year has been. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't. I think maybe there's one thing to add to it, and that is the blessings that have come through us rather than to us. Perhaps this is the week to remember when someone has said, I really got something out of that from whatever you said or did. And to remember that perhaps those were not your actions or your words, but rather were the Holy Spirit acting through you. Certainly that's what I will be doing tomorrow, giving thanks for all the times when God saw fit to use the, the, the bruised reed that is my preaching life, that is my spiritual life, for the benefit of others in God's kingdom. And what a blessing that is to me to know, even when perhaps I have overlooked it or given it a less value than it deserved. So thanks be to God for St. Cecilia and her reminder that sometimes it isn't what we were planning that ends up being the blessing.
I hope that tomorrow you will remember that. That was the main point. I hope that actually will, this time it will actually stick. <laughs> and that tomorrow in some small way you will give thanks to God for all the ways that the Holy Spirit has acted in you and through you. The ways the world has been blessed because of you. Amen.